Welcome to the Women's Connection. I'm Barry Louise. Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or a professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Welcome. Life's a bitch and then you die. But with me, we're going to talk about life's a bitch and what you can do about your job. And with me is Andrea Kay and some very fascinating points to keep in mind as you go through your work day. And I would like to welcome Andrea. Thank you for having me, Barry. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us. How did you come up with the name of your book? Well, my last book was called Life's a Bitch and Then You Change Careers. And people really identified with that because it really is a little bit like that, that life can be very, very frustrating and difficult. But if you change careers, you can change everything in your life and, you know, really make it something that you want and something that is um, more satisfying for you. So when I looked at what was going on in the world and all the emails that I get from my column and to and regarding my books, people were bitching a lot. They were complaining about not just their careers not working out, but the things that were going on at work and the lack of control that they felt. So I thought, you know what? Work's a bitch also, but you can work it out. And so it's about the six steps, the things that you can do to make it better. And people identified with that too, and even more so today. Well, what do you find is the constant complaint that people have from the workforce? Well, today, I think people feel as if they have no power and no control because they feel as if there are so many forces working against them. Um, they feel as if they're working more, they're getting less. They are being asked to do more and they're being, um, there are things that are being taken away from them, like benefits. They are um, just feeling as if no matter what they do, their security is out the window. You know, they just are feeling totally insecure and fearful about what to do so that they can be secure. And, and that's the overriding uh, sentiment and fear that I get from a lot of people in no matter what industry you're in these days, even healthcare, which is, you know, a, a strong field. How do you suggest people adjust to this complaint? I mean, not everybody can just quit their job and move on to something else, especially if you're in the over 40, which becomes pragmatic because of the fact that once you hit that magic number of 40, everybody feels dispensable. And basically in today's world you are unfortunately well first of all you have to look at how things are not the way you think they should be and and if you have in your mind that i should be feeling secure and that i will have a job for life well you need to shift that because that is just not the way it is and if you hold on to that then you will always be focusing on staying secure instead of staying valuable so the new mindset or it's a mindset that i've been preaching for over 20 years which which is that which is look at how to stay valuable not secure and if you have that mindset then you are always thinking about what do I need to do to keep myself valuable for the company that I'm in, the field I'm in? What are the trends that are going on out in the world that affect the things that I do? And you need to think especially today about things like how do I help my company keep its doors open? How do I help my company um, deal with the issues that are going on that are affecting customer loyalty or affecting their business. So look for ways thinking that will help your company move beyond that fearful state that they're in and that will make you more valuable. So it's really a matter first of all of a mindset and not buying into wow I'm over 40 and I'm gonna be the first one to go. You know you really have to think about um, what you have as a 40 plus person worker not what you lack. And again, in this general state of fear, everybody goes into that fear state and they start worrying about, well, I'm, you know, here, here's what's going to happen to me and I'll be out on the street or I'll be fired because I'll, I'm older. Not necessarily so if you position yourself as valuable. Okay, that's the key. What are the best places 
to find future trends? Are there books, internet sites uh, to, to find mm -hmm. what's going on in whatever field you're in? The best place to, to what I call fine tune your radar is, first of all, pick up the, the news. You know, read the, I read the New York Times every day, and I sit there with a piece of paper, and I get ideas, and I start seeing a sense of where the world is going just by seeing what is happening, what people are complaining about, what problems they're facing that nobody has come up with a solution for. And if you start listening, just listen to daily conversations about what people are griping about, what they're dealing with, you will start seeing trends and then you can say well how does that trend affect what I do I mean look at the general trends in the world the green movement how is that going to affect my industry how does the the increase in population growth affect my industry how does a uh, technology um, these are questions that you can ask yourself. How does the, the overall technology issues, the growth of technology, cultural, environmental issues, how are those affecting me? Yes, there are also websites. And in my other book that I mentioned, uh, Life's a Bitch and Then You Change Careers, I have a list of those websites that you can go to. But if you just look at what's happening in your own community and the world overall, you will start seeing these trends and then you say well how does that trickle down to what I do and in my job and in my company or my field there's two sets of people there's the blue-collar worker and then there's the white-collar worker how does the blue-collar worker adjust to stuff like this as far as moving ahead or staying secure well, I don't think there's a whole lot of difference in how you, you position this in your head. You have to see yourself as somebody who, whether you're blue collar, whether you're, you're an administrative assistant, you're the CEO of a company, you need to think, why are they going to keep me on the payroll? What is it that I do that matters? You have to think through how what you do on a daily basis helps this company be more efficient, make more money, cut costs. So how does what you do, every job, that's what you are doing. You are there to solve a problem. I don't care what level you're at. So first of all, you need to think about what is the problem that I help my company solve in the job, and then how can I do that more efficiently? What ideas do I have that can contribute to making this company more efficient, more uh, profitable? And there is nothing wrong with telling your supervisor or your manager about that, having a conversation and saying, you know, I've noticed that when our customers call in or when I deal with this issue, here's where we have a little inefficiency. Here's what I'd like to do. So don't just go with the problem, come up with the solution. I don't care what level you're at, you can offer those kinds of solutions. And again, what does that do? It makes you more valuable. How do you handle a situation when you have a boss who is not receptive to your suggestions, comments, thoughts, because they are also paralyzed in their fear of how to maintain their job? Well, you can't force anybody to do something. You can only influence. And that's the goal that you go into a conversation like this with, which is to help them be open to seeing a different way, to being more um, effective, profitable, w efficient, whatever. So think, I am going to try to influence to help this person. Can't force them. All you can do is present the idea. And if they're not open to it, well, they're not open to it. Um, so y you can't force it, and so don't get frustrated about it, but accept it say, you know, I did my best, because I'll tell you, if you don't offer the ideas and the thoughts and the observations that you have, you feel worse about your work. And I talk a lot about this in this book. I have a whole chapter on, on, on greatness and feeling like your work matters. And the more that you think about the things that can make a difference and the more you offer them, the more you will feel good about your work, but you can't force people to embrace them if they're not willing to. If you're outsourced, mm -hmm. is there any kind of a lifeboat that one can hang on to or things that they should do immediately? Because every part of the country is different as far as the services that are provided by the county. Well, first of all, let yourself feel what you need to go through, okay? It's not an easy thing to lose your job. 
and know that this is not the end of the world. You have to have faith that you're going to be okay because you will. But let yourself go through the process of grief and that's really what it is. It's a loss. It's an unexpected loss and there's potentially lots of fear around that. And that is okay and you need to let yourself go through that. Now if you need some support as you go through that, talk to friends, talk to uh, a service, get some help because there are people that can help you. And know that people may tell you, oh, get over it. You can get over it. And you will, but still let yourself go through what you need to go through. Now, once you do that, then I want you to really realize that you need to then focus on what it is that you can go out there and offer and maybe see yourself not as a job title anymore, but a body of skills. So put some time and energy. If, you, if you're not working, now's the time to be putting the, that kind of effort into it. You think through, what are my strengths? What are the skills that I can pick up, pack up, and take with me to another employer. But get rid of the mindset of a, of a title and think of yourself in terms of these skills, this body of knowledge, and believe that you have that to offer to somebody and that somebody's going to want it. And it's not just what you offer in terms of skills, it's your ethics, it's your work ethic rather, it's your, um, your commitment to being there every day, to doing the best you can. Make sure you talk about that in your interview. And get support and get help because everybody needs that. And, and don't blame yourself for what has happened to you because it's happening to people. Some of the best people I know are losing their jobs. And it's not about you, but it is going to be for you and your responsibility to, once you give yourself permission to go through what you need to go through, get support, to get back on your feet and be positive about yourself when you do talk to, your, uh, talk to employers about what you have to offer. Because think about it, somebody else prior knew that you were valuable and somebody else will see that in you as well. Most of the jobs that are going to be around in five years, ten years, haven't even been considered yet or even thought of. So I guess this goes back to analyzing trends and what you can do and how you can fit in on the future of America. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, what would you say is the second largest complaint that you get from people? Well, when it comes to what you were just talking about, it's the how do I figure out what to do if I don't know what the future is going to be? How do I figure out how I fit in? And so first of all, I want to tell you that you, you got to get rid of that um, I am a whatever, the title thing, okay? Because as you just said, some of these titles, many of these titles don't even exist. We don't even know what they are. And they're called different things in different uh, companies and in different industries. So the, the, the desire, most people have this desire to know exactly what I should call myself and what's the direct path to get there. That's, the, that's probably the second biggest issue that I hear. And so if you can embrace, and I know this is not easy, but if you can embrace the concept of ambiguity, not knowing exactly how it's going to turn out, that will help you enormously. Get rid of that need to know exactly how it's going to turn out because we don't know. The best thing you can do is to know yourself well. Again, go back and know what are the top six strengths, the things that you can actually do that somebody will find value in. And by that I mean, are you a good problem solver? Are you a good writer? Do you analyze? What do you analyze? Are you somebody who's good at coordinating? What do you coordinate? What are those top six things that you do well? And market yourself and see yourself in terms of skills, not title. And that will help you. Then when you start looking at what are the, what are the needs, the shifting, changing needs of the world, then you can say, okay, I can see how my skills fit into that. And it also makes you able to then move with more ease as that changes. So that is, that's the key to getting through this and enjoying it. And, and I'll tell you, it's really, if you can embrace that ambiguity and let go of the need to know, then it becomes an enjoyable path something you're experiencing as you go through it, it's challenging, and you see how 
you are building your career not depending on things to come to you, but you're thinking, ah, I see how I might fit in. I need to go get a course in that so I can update my skills in that area or whatever it is. With every great change in our economic system, people seem to turn back to spirituality or the religion if they have one or, you know, they change internally. Mm -hmm. How do you see this happening now? Well, I think that is a really important point that you bring up and something that can help anchor you at this time. Um, one of the things that I've talked a little bit about is the importance of having control over your emotion. Because if you allow this emotion of fear control you, you will run into walls and you will not move forward as you need to. So I personally do this. Um, it's not an easy thing to do, but every day I sit, if, you, if you're not necessarily a religious person or you're trying to figure out how can I just maintain some calm and some peace in me that will help me get through this, is to sit quietly for a couple minutes every day and just try to get your mind centered and feel calm inside. If you can get to that place and kind of set the tone for the day, I don't care if it's two minutes, I don't care if it's for 30 seconds, it can help you maintain that tone throughout the day and then when you start feeling panicked, be able to go back to that familiar place. That will help you say, brain, heart, you don't need to be out of control, you don't need to be fearful, but you are in control of this self and I want to be in that place so that I can make reasonable decisions based not on fear but based on choice of what I want. Now if you, um, there are all kinds of groups, people, um, uh, other uh, religious entities or, or, or people, uh, you know, uh, associations that can support you as well and I think this is a great time to join a job search group maybe through a church, a synagogue or another association. Um, look for groups of people that don't just sit around and gripe who might be associated through um, one of these um, entities that I mentioned, but look for people who are giving a, a, an opportunity to kind of gripe out loud, but then to say, okay, what do we need to do? What can you do to move forward? Or that will give you feedback on maybe what's getting in your way. So reach out. Don't just sit at home worrying and being fearful, but definitely reach out and spend some time inside and looking inside and calming yourself as well. I remember way back when we had another downturn in our economy, I asked somebody to come work with me for, at a charity and her comment was, I don't have time, I've got to find a job. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, you don't have time to help somebody less fortunate than you. I wish you a lot of luck in finding a job. How do you think helping charities today will enhance you or just make you feel good? You said it. It will enhance your feelings about yourself when you reach out and give to people. And what I've found is it, that that is not only the key, but when you are among other people who need help, um, and you meet other people who are just like you giving help, who you can network with. So that's an additional benefit, but that's not the reason to do it. The reason to do it is really because you are reaching out. You know, this whole concept of networking is not just about asking for help, but it's supporting other people. And by giving people who are in need at a time when you are in need is extremely fulfilling and helps fill a void many times in you. I highly recommend it. What do you think of the social networking that's going on right now? You've got uh, Facebook, which is so popular. You've got LinkedIn. You've got Plaxo. You've got Twitter. Can that help you or hinder you? Well, I, I think it, it's a hindrance if you depend upon it and you think, hey, this is going to be the solution you know, to my problem of finding a new job. 
it's a it's no different really than building a network in 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 real time with real people what it is just think of it as a tool not your savior it's a tool to be able to connect with people do not spend your whole day sitting there writing to people and telling them what you're doing and that's the downside of it is i think it can be very time consuming and take you away from meaningful productive conversations and activities um, but use it as a tool overall you need a strategy that's not a strategy just like sending your resume out to a bunch of companies is not a strategy it's one piece of the strategy use it wisely use it strategically don't think it's going to be the solution to finding your job it's just one path because if you're putting out word to this person and that person and then talking to that person it's a it's it's a it's a path it's a vehicle but it's not the solution our economy changing and people questioning their values today like never before what's important to them many times you're going to find in a couple one spouse or even both spouses outsourced mm -hmm. how do you cope in a situation like that is that good do you spend time together do you spend time separately so you don't get on each other's nerves or how do you help one another this is a time when your relationship can either be weakened or strengthened and i would advocate this is a time to strengthen it but you have to do this you have to talk you have to have conversation you have to sit down and be realistic and acknowledge what's going on and acknowledge the emotion around it and figure out a plan i mean you need to sit down with your spouse and say look i'm hurting i'm scared i'm whatever cry use that person as a support for the situation and and say you know i'm worried what are we going to do how can we go through this together acknowledge that there's going to be time when we're frustrated because we can't live the life that we used to have because we've just lost an income talk about how this is going to affect you in your everyday life if you have children and and other aspects of your life and really sit down and talk about that and then come up with a plan but first talk about it make a list get out the white pad with the pen and say here's the things that I'm worried about and now here's how we can adapt shift change what we can spend less money on so do it together as a couple don't let it divide you let it unite you and I have found that when you do that when you go through these challenges together it can be an, an, an empowering, I never use that word, but it's a great word, really, to experience, to bring you together, and to help you prepare for other challenges that you will face later in life. You have six steps in your book going from pissed off to powerful. What other one would you say is one of the most powerful ones that somebody can concentrate on developing I think the first step in my book which I alluded to early on is the most important and affects everything and that is to understand that you are in charge of your choices and by that you have to I mean this you have to look at what you control and what you don't and you have to start where things are not where you think they should be because if you sit there and say every day they should be responding to my emails but they aren't you're not starting where things are you're starting where you think they should be and as long as you stay in that should be state you're not going to change your activity and what you do in response to that if you shift though your thinking which is you know this isn't a good strategy and I must be doing something wrong then you're looking at your behavior or your your belief and now you can shift your behavior and that is the, 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 the most important step in going through anything in life, in particular, though, this time, which is to look at what you can change and what you can't and what you can influence. And how can you influence it by changing how you look at it? Andrea, what do you suggest people prepare now that they can take for the rest of their lives, no matter what age they're at? Okay, that's step four in my book. 
which is prepare for hurricanes, sinkholes, and manana. And that means prepare for anything that you don't know is coming, because we don't know what is coming. And I've got in there my who knew strategy, because you never know what is coming. And in that strategy are things like know why you matter, know how to talk about yourself, be always learning something new. I've got a list of all kinds of things in there. But if you're prepared for and have the mentality that, you know, I don't know what's coming, so I always need to be open to it, that will help you not only get through this, but get through and enjoy. As I said before, it's enjoyable when you feel more powerful and in control. And that is what will make you feel more powerful if you are prepared for anything that may come your way. Andrea, I understand you have a website with great information. How can people contact you? Go to www.andreakay.com. I have thousands of articles on there, and if you sign up for my newsletter, I'll send you that, and then you'll know what's going on, trends. I talk a lot about trends. Andrea, in the closing moments of the show, what would you like to leave the audience with? Everybody has a set of skills. You have gifts that you can utilize that somebody will pay you for. The key is to know what those are so that who you're talking to knows what they are. But everybody has value. It's a matter of letting them know what those things are, being able to articulate it, and first though, believing in yourself. Thank you so much, Andrea O.K., okay, for joining us and sharing with us so much knowledge about how to prepare our careers for the future. If you have any questions for Andrea or myself, please write us here at The Woman's Connection. Look forward to hearing from you. Bye now.